Hello, welcome to this week's legislative update. I'm Jim Baumgart, your host. Thank you very much for joining us because us is the Department of Natural Resources, Dan Lakey, who's uh, new but not new. And uh, I don't know how to explain that, Dan, but I will in a minute. Um, Dan is the uh, wildlife supervisor, uh, that's um, ducks and deer and other things, uh, for this area. And uh, uh, he's been around for about a year, hasn't it? That's right. So welcome to the program and welcome to uh, the uh, cable TV. And uh, we're going to inform the people about the good work that you're doing. But before we do that, why don't you give um, the viewer the, a little background on where you came from and uh, what you've done. You know, maybe a minute of that, uh, just to tantalize them a little bit. <laughs> appreciate it, Jim. And thank you for having me on. I really do appreciate that. Um, I actually grew up in, in Wisconsin in a town called Medford and stayed there until I was 22. I graduated from UW-Stevens Point, accepted a position in Kansas as a wildlife biologist. You left Wisconsin? I left Wisconsin. The game plan was I would be there a year or two. I was I just gotten married and that I'd be there a year or two and then come back to Wisconsin to work for the DNR. And here we are 30 years later and I finally made it. So. Um, spent some time, like I said, with Kansas Wildlife and Parks. I was an uh, area wild, wildlife biologist there in the uh, Lenexa, Kansas office, which folks around here would think of that as the Kansas City area. Spent 15 years there and then uh, took an opportunity and went to work for the Extension Service as their natural resources agent and then also as their director. I did that for 11 years. Wow, great background. Well, we're very happy. You've been here, what, about a year, a year and a quarter? Uh, a little over a year, a year and a month, so okay. right around that ballpark. Yeah. Well, and so you have to learn where uh, the marsh is and Sheboygan and uh, places in between. Absolutely. You, know. you represent how, how many counties now? Yeah, I'm the area wildlife supervisor of what they call the Lake Michigan District, which is seven counties. So I go right up to Doran Brown County, come down to Kiwani, and then do Calumet, Manitowoc, and then um, Sheboygan and Fond du Lac. Well, and one of the things that I've seen, uh, Dan, that you do, or you have been doing, is when the Sheboygan County Conservation Association, which is, you know, 25 or 30 clubs, meets every month, uh, you've been showing up uh, on a regular basis to update them. Uh, you provide them a little publication. Uh, uh, the Woodchuck, I think, is the, the name of the little um, uh, email uh, publication and uh, answer questions. So anybody that's the public when the uh, Conservation Association meets and they, it's open to the public, they can come and ask you and the wardens uh, questions. Yeah, it's very nice. It's a great association. I mean, uh, the very active group do a lot of great things in the community f related to hunting and fishing and shooting and uh, educating our youth uh, on the, the opportunities that are available to them. So it's, it's a great group. And it's just something that's really enjoyable to do to get to get, put a DNR face out there for folks. And yeah. uh, we've had a little bit of turnover in our office, so it's nice to get out there and let them get to know you. Well, and, and uh, you're not like a... Um, 24-year-old fresh out of, out of college, uh, you're a person with experience. I, I stopped at your office um, to invite you to, to this program and um, saw all those big deer heads uh, sitting in there and I said, oh, are these Wisconsin deer heads? They're, no, they were from out of the state. But uh, you know how to hunt deer anyway. I really enjoy deer and turkey hunting. Um, Kansas is just a, it's a different world out there. On the opening day, you've got less than 100,000 people rifle hunting. Is that right? And the state's just as big as Wisconsin. So well, it's sort of a flex state too, isn't it? You know, it's kind of a misnomer. The <laughs> eastern portion and the western the portion there, are, huh? I have some very big hills in them, absolutely. Well, you, you, you have a couple of things that the legislature threw a curve at the county association, and I'm sure department personnel, they, they added uh, to the... Uh, budget that you don't have to have tags for deer, goose, and turkeys. That um, is right. You don't have to have the carcass tags. Right. You don't have to tag the animal, and you don't have to carry those anymore until the, the meat's consumed. But you have to report your deer, don't you? Yes, sir. Not the goose? Uh, not on the goose side of things. For the deer and, and turkey, turkey, you have to still register the animal. You have till 5 p.m. the day after you harvest it. And you do that by telephone? You can do that by telephone or by um, 
a computer or email or, uh, an iPhone you can go ahead and do that okay. and so that's that's a nice process there and they changed for for geese from the standpoint you used to have to report your harvest mm -hmm. they're going to do something after the season with harvest surveys okay. so you do not need to do that for geese anymore either so if if they they call in the the person calling in has to have a certain identification number somehow when you register the animal you need to have your tag number or your authorization number so what we're recommending people do because we've already issued before this 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 budget bill was passed we issued over a million carcass tags okay so the easiest so thing, numbers are out there they're out there they're, they're still valid the easiest thing to do i think is to consider them as a coupon okay so you've got the information on there that you need once you go online and fill it out throw the coupon away because you know you're done with it right and and you've you've got all the information oh, right there it, in that printed or, or form keep it for a souvenir <laughs> I normally do that when I don't fill them, and I have a stack yeah, of them we, like that. So. To, in Wisconsin, we used to have metal tags uh, for deer, and we used to Absolutely. save all of those that we never uh, closed, which meant we didn't get a deer. We have also a, uh, a, a change. Uh, Sheboygan in Manitowoc County, uh, County men and a couple of others, because of an incident of uh, chronic waste disease that appeared 15 years ago, um, the counties, uh, the county in Manitowoc, Sheboygan closed down um, uh, the feeding of deer. That's and, correct. Uh, and then a year later, uh, the state closed it uh, down. And then um, this year, the state legislature changed it and opened it. But the counties still have their ordinance in place, and that is uh, being worked through it at this moment in time when we're talking. And it may be different uh, by the time the show shows. Um, you cannot uh, feed. Uh, deer uh, in Sheboygan and Manitowoc County. Now, um, how will it be after the uh, county board meets in February? We'll tell you after that. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, my committee uh, voted six to nothing to keep the protection of uh, uh, trying to keep the spread of uh, chronic waste disease, which is a subject that uh, you have some information about that there's a, a new program to uh, provide information on uh, people with mature deer, they can bring them in, always could do that free, and get them checked for chronic waste disease. What's going on? Yeah, I appreciate you asking that because I think it's important for our sportsmen to understand what's going on here. Uh, Sheboygan and Fond du Lac County and then Washington, Ozaki, and one other county, there's five of them in a clump. Basically, what we're doing is called weighted sampling. And what that means is we're looking to uh, sample adult deer mainly adult bucks from the standpoint of they have the most opportunity to show if this disease is present. Mm -hmm. It's currently not found in the wild population in, in Sheboygan County and we want to stay ahead of that. So what we're asking is that individuals, we, we're working with some taxidermists, you can also bring your adult deer in to get it aged or to have the CWD tested to our office. Um, I'll give a number out, uh, call for our wildlife management folks at 920-893-8541 and set up an appointment during the nine-day gun season. Yeah, we'll put that on our, our trailer of the end of the program so people can write that down and call if they get a deer that they want checked. Very good, because we really do, this is our opportunity to make sure that it's not in the county. And again, we're working with taxidermists that are already getting in there, skinning and caping them. And it's a simple process for basically removing lip nodes mm -hmm. from the, the base of the jaw right on the neck. And uh, we've really gotten much better at getting the, the samples back, the results back. Last year, it's right around 10 days, so mm -hmm. it might even get, be a little less this year. So if somebody gets a deer, wherever they get it from, they, they can bring them in, although you want to concentrate in those five counties. But if somebody goes up north to Florence County, where I used to hunt, and want to check it out to make sure the deer is safe, they could bring in the head, they call first, set an appointment, and uh, um, save the meat, uh, keep the chops and freeze them, and, and the stuff that you're going to make sausage out of, uh, freeze them, and then when you find out, if it has or it has not chronic waste disease. The recommendation by the um, Wisconsin, um, what societies, the medical, the Research Center for Disease Control. Center, Center for the Disease Control and the Wisconsin Health Department. And also the World Health Organization. And, and, yeah, the World Health Organization recommends um, that if your deer has chronic waste disease, it is their recommendation to uh, destroy the meat. That is correct. Right. There's, the recommendation is Don't not to eat anything. 
<laughs> I just, we'll just no, leave it at that. <laughs> uh, no, not even if you don't like the neighbor. But uh, um, there is no uh, known uh, uh, passage of, of this uh, uh, disease from uh, deer to humans. But there is some new uh, data showing it from uh, deer to uh, uh, monkeys and other things, which is the first time that's been documented. So we have to be careful. Absolutely. I, I, you know, much, much rather you be safe than sorry. Again, oh, yeah. there's never been a case that has been passed on in that situation with the trial with monkeys. You know, that some of that was injected straight into their brains, sure. which you would expect that to maybe happen, but there actually was a case where it was just by eating the, the, the meat. So. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if people are eating uh, infected uh, deer from age two to uh, age um, 78, like me, <laughs> you, you want to be sure that uh, it's safe. So um, uh, we'll make sure that that uh, telephone number is on there, and we encourage people, uh, if you get an adult deer, uh, uh, e even if it's not a buck, you can, you're allowed to bring it in, and, they'll, and you'll test it free. Absolutely, and we'd really encourage anybody who harvests deer in Sheboygan County, we'd really like to get some aging information because the pr place where we've normally collected that aging information is not uh, collecting deer this year. So if you have an adult deer, buck or doe, we'd love to have you bring it by so we could age it. Oh, you, you want to see if we have old deer left? <laughs> we tried to shoot those things, Dan, early. Uh, anything else you want to add uh, uh, to the uh, public for uh, hunting? Obviously. Uh, a lot of hunting going on right now. Um, deer, uh, they just finished uh, the uh, youth hunt. Uh, I got a picture from uh, one of the classics. Uh, the 12 year old uh, shot a nice 13 um, point buck. Oh, very and, nice. And that'll appear in my column in a couple of weeks. So, um, safety is important. Absolutely. Uh, can't encourage people enough to take the hunter safety courses and to just maintain that. I would speak since, you know, the bow season and things like that going on. Uh, tree stand safety, you need to wear a, a strap when you're up there in case you would fall. There's so many instances of people falling and getting injured. Make sure you have that safety strap on. Same thing with the stand that's up on the tree. Strap it down. I mean, make sure that it's solid before you get up there. All of the gun safety rules apply. Um, you mentioned season's coming up. I know the pheasant season just opened up. We put a lot of stock birds out there. And so looking forward to seeing how the, the hunter is going to be enjoying that. Well, and we've also had, uh, this is the third year you've had the crossbow uh, at the same time, the archery season. And uh, I've seen some reports that uh, uh, they've been pretty successful, but not um, overly successful. I agree. That's pretty much what it is. They're, they're very accurate, but it's the, the people operating the crossbow are normally operating a regular bow, so they're yeah. waiting for and, the deer. And, and some of them are, uh, us are older that uh, need a crossbow because we can't pull them. <laughs> the others. we got to go, Dan. It, uh, time is over. I do want to thank uh, uh, Dan for coming in with the Department of Natural Resources. If you have a deer, please give a call to the uh, uh, telephone number we list on the uh, credits and uh, um, make sure that uh, you find out if your deer is uh, 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 safe from chronic waste disease. And until next week, this has been Legislative Update. So now we have to wait for the.